and Dreamweaver automatically uh, throws in a little bit of comments. So we're going to create the function, and to establish a function in Dreamweaver, or in JavaScript rather, you simply type the word function. Now, since I'm using Dreamweaver, uh, Dreamweaver automatically has syntax highlighting and uh, syntax error detection, which is a very, very handy feature. Uh, so our function, if we look back here, we see this is one. So we can type this in, and then we have our parentheses, and then we have curly brackets. You can see, give it a second, and the errors go away. So inside of here, we're going to set up a variable, and we're going to say var, and this is how you establish a variable in JavaScript. You simply type the, the word var, uh, short for variable, obviously, and uh, check in the time. And uh, so we're going to call it username box ID. And we need to get the ID of our username box. So in and in JavaScript, every line must end with a semicolon, much like PHP. Well, not every line. If you're declaring a function or something, it doesn't need it. But normal lines, you need a semicolon at the end of each of them. So we want to say documents dot. They need to spell document right. Documents dot. Uh, get I element by ID. You see it right here, and the ID of our element is username box. So right there. So make sure everything is spelled correctly or else you'll get errors and this will not work. So we have our variable. Now the reason is because so we don't have to continuously keep typing this out. So we're going to create an if statement and we're going to say if and just to create the statement Okay, right here. So inside of our uh, if statement right here, we're going to say username box ID. And did I spell that right? No, I forgot the E once again. Okay, so we have username box ID dot value. And I didn't hit the dot. Dot value. This is equals equals. It's two equal signs. And then you have your double quotation marks. And inside of our double quotation marks, we want to put username. Because if we look at our index page, you can see our value is username. So that needs to be your value. Uh, so, okay, sorry, I paused it right there. There's a bang in the background. We'll probably continue. Um, so we have our username box ID value. Uh, now this gets the value of our username box right here. So it gets the value right there. So if the value is equal to username, which is what we set it to, that means uh, there's no errors. Um, if the username if the box is set to username, we want to change the value to nothing. So if you want, you can just copy and paste this, and then you say equals, and then double quotation marks, and then a semicolon. So we want to make our username box, if the use value is username, when you click into it, we're going to set the value to nothing. So uh, before we test this out, we have to include our JavaScript file into uh, our index page. So we're going to say script and the language is JavaScript and then the source is uh, design forward slash JavaScript dot JS. Oh. And then we want to close that. So this is the code you need to include your JavaScript file. So if we refresh our home page and oh I believe I forgot to end the script. Okay. So if we refresh our homepage, and I forgot you have to end the script right there. We refresh our homepage, you see when we click into our username box, it changes the value to nothing, which is exactly what we want it to do. But it doesn't change back once we leave the box. So if we copy this function completely, and we change this focus right here to blur, we can change this value, we can cut out the value right there, and replace it right there. So if you change those uh, three things, if we refresh the page, you see, when we click out, and the value is nothing, it'll automatically change the value back to username. So if we start typing something, and we leave the box, it won't change it. But if the box value is set to nothing, it'll automatically change. 
So I am going to pause the video and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the password box and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, it only took a moment. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I simply just changed all of the uh, usernames from right here since I copied and pasted the code. I simply changed all of them to password. Now our value for our password box, the default value is simply uh, password and it's not uppercase. So yeah. So if we refresh the page, you can see once we do that, it automatically changes. Now, uh, something that you might want to do is we're going to change this type to text, and I'm going to change the value to whoops to an uppercase password, and then go back to the JavaScript file, change the value to an uppercase password. So if we set it like this, you see it's just like that, but what we can do with JavaScript is when we focus, we can change the uh, the type of this. So you simply do this, and we can say we can set the type to password. So if we copy and paste this, paste it down here, we can set the type to text once we leave. Uh, so if you have it like this, this code right here, if we refresh, you see the type is password and if you leave it's working but once you enter it it automatically changes the type to a password type and when you leave it changes it back so that is the end of this video um, and this video might be cut into smaller parts uh, because of the length because because the length of the video was uh, longer than 10 minutes and YouTube only allows 10 minutes for non-partners so I'm gonna stop the video here this is the end of part 7 uh, the part 7 video completely uh, so thanks for watching.